bubble sort algorithm is the easiest sorting algorithm, however, it is the slowest one. Let's have a look at the example where we have to sort 5 elements. In bubble sort algorithm there are rounds. On first round we compare first two elements. First one is greater than second one, that's why they are swapped. Then we move to second pair of elements. Again, first one is greater than second one. We swap them again. Then third pair. Again, 8 is greater than 3. We swap two elements again. And finally last pair on this round. 8 is greater than 1, that's why we move 8 to the last position in this array of elements. First round is over and now one element out of 5 is in its correct position. Second round. We again start from the left. Take first pair, there is no need to swap. Second pair, we change 6 and 3. And last pair on the round 2 is 6 and 1. And we move 6 after 1. And now two elements 6 and 8 are in their positions. Round 3. First pair 5 and 3. We change order of the elements. Second pair 5 and 1. Again, we swap those two elements. And round 3 is over. Now three elements 5, 6 and 8 are in their correct positions. Last round. Round number 4. 3 is greater than 1, that's why we swap those two elements and round 4 is over. After this last round, all elements are in their correct positions and they were sorted in ascending order, starting from the left side to the right side. But what is the complexity of such algorithm? For 5 elements we got 4 rounds. 4 pairs were compared on first round and just one pair was compared on the last 4th round. Therefore, in order to find out total quantity of the pairs which we are compared, we have to sum up numbers starting from 4 to 1, which gives us 10 for our example with 5 elements. Let's extrapolate that to n elements. In case of n elements, there will be n-1 rounds. With n-1 pairs on the first round, to just one pair on the last round. And there is a simple formula which allows us to find out total quantity of the pairs in such case. It is n multiplied by n minus 1 divided by 2. Let's verify how this formula works for 5 elements. It gives us 10, which is a correct result. But if there are, let's say, 100 elements, total quantity of the pairs will be close to 5000, which is really huge. And that's because we actually multiply n by n. And therefore, time complexity for such algorithm is big O square n, which is really, really slow. And space complexity for such algorithm is big O1, because we actually don't require to create any additional variables and utilize other data structures, we could simply swap elements in place. That's it for description of the bubble sort algorithm and that's it for its time and space complexities. And that is animation of a bubble sort algorithm using P5 JavaScript library. And finally, let's have a look at the implementations of the bubble sort algorithm in a couple of different programming languages. And first, let's have a look at the basic implementation in Python. Here is definition of the bubble sort function, which has single parameter list of elements, shortly L. N is the length of this list. There are two for loops. First one represents rounds, and in each round we compare adjacent elements starting from the very first pair of the elements in the list. And if left element is greater than right, they are swapped in place without creation of the additional variable. After the last round, modified list is returned by the bubble sort function. Let's run this code and observe how such list with same elements as in the animation will be sorted. And as expected, we got list with elements in the ascending order. But let's now count total quantity of the comparisons or pairs in such implementation to check how efficient this algorithm is. Let's introduce new variable called pairs. And let's increase its value by 1 in the inner loop and print its value at the end of the bubble sort function. Let's execute code now and I see that 16 pairs were compared which is more than expected quantity, 10. That's because now on each round we compare all pairs including pairs with elements which were already sorted during previous rounds. 
In order to optimize that, we could compare pairs in each round only till the last unsorted element. And for that we have to deduct quantity of the previous rounds in the range of the inner loop. Let's run code. And now 10 pairs of elements were compared instead of 16, which is more optimal, because now we take into account already sorted elements. But let's now add few other test cases. In the second one, list is already sorted. In the third, partially sorted. Next, list contains two elements. And finally, there are two side cases, one with just one element and empty list. Let's check results for all test cases. And now we see that in the fourth test case, there was one pair which is actually expected. And in the last two side cases, program also did its job and returned unmodified list because there was nothing to sort. But in all first three test cases, there were 10 comparisons, which is probably not optimal at least for cases 2 and 3. We could optimize implementation further in order to decrease quantity of comparisons for lists which are already sorted or partially sorted. And for that let's have a look at the implementation in JavaScript with same test cases. This implementation in JavaScript is similar to implementation in Python. There is also bubble sort function and it has single parameter A that stands for array of elements. But now outer loop is replaced with while loop. And here you see that new variable is sorted was introduced. And this variable tells us whether array of elements is already sorted after a specific round or not. And initially we assume that uh, array is not sorted. It means that uh, is sorted value is initially false. Also we count quantity of sorted elements. Sorted uh, variable stands for that and initially we have zero sorted elements. And also similarly as we counted in Python application we count total quantity of comparisons that we did on all rounds. So in the outer while loop we verify value of the is sorted variable. And if array of elements is not yet sorted, we start comparison of the pairs of elements. And before doing that, we assume that now array is already sorted. In the inner loop, we go from the first element in the array till the last unsorted element. Here are same as in the previous implementation, we deduct sorted, which is quantity of already sorted elements in this inner loop in its range. And inside of this inner loop, we compare two adjacent elements. And in case left element is greater than right, then we swap them in place using the structural assignment in JavaScript. There is no need to create additional variable for such reassignment of the values. And if we performed at least one swap, we change value of the is sorted variable to false. It means that after introduction of is sorted variable, we could understand whether we need to go one round more through all elements or not. If there was at least one swap here on this line, and if is sorted variable changed its value to false, we will go through one more cycle in this while loop. And finally, at the end of the while loop, when array was already sorted, we print to the console quantity of the pairs that we compared. And of course, we return A as a result of the bubble sort function. Now let's run this algorithm with is sorted variable introduced in order to optimize performance for cases 2 and 3 and check how many pairs we compare in each of those examples. And we got following results. For the first test case, we compared 10 pairs, as expected. This result is the same as in the Python application. But for the second test case, where array was already sorted, we compared only 4 pairs. It means that we go only one round through all elements, and there was no need for further rounds, because after first round we understood that array was already sorted and there were no swaps of elements. For this third test case, where array was partially sorted, it was enough to compare 7 pairs, and it's an indication that there were just 2 rounds of comparisons. And results for last 3 test cases 
are same as in the Python application. It means that after introduction of such is sorted variable and modification of the outer for loop to while loop, we increase sorting speed for arrays which were either already sorted or partially sorted. It means that for already sorted arrays, we achieve more optimal performance of the algorithm and now its complexity is big O n instead of big O square n. Here we see that actual quantity of the pairs was n minus 1, where n is quantity of the elements in the input array. This was implementation of the bubble sort algorithm in JavaScript and it is the most optimal one because it takes into account quantity of already sorted elements and also it stops comparisons in case array was already sorted on one of the rounds. This was bubble sort algorithm in details. Hit that subscribe button in order to get more videos like this in the future. Bye bye.